to Get Seen, Be Heard. I'm Karen Yankovic, and Christina Daves is my co-host, and we're excited today to have Jolene Moody with us. And uh, yeah, Jolene is going to tell us about, Christina and I are both speakers, as well as, you know, the businesses we run. So uh, when I saw Jolene doing blabs about getting paid to be a speaker, I knew that it was, it was a great topic for this format, for our Get Seen, Be Heard audience. Um, basically, what we're doing with this um, show is we are helping you understand the little tips and tricks that you can use to elevate your brand, right? To elevate your brand. And when you elevate your brand, you elevate your career, you elevate your income. Um, and, you know, these are things like I work on social media, Christina works on PR. And when we put them together, magic happens. So uh, I will, Christina Daves is a PR for anyone if you guys don't know her. Um, so Christina, introduce yourself and let's get rolling here. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I think we've got think some we've regular got people. Regular people. Oh, my echo a little bit. Let me turn that down. Um, but yeah, I'm Christina Dave with Care for Anyone. Uh, I work with small business owners to help them get visibility buzz for their business because publicists are expensive. You know, I'm in DC. Jolene, you're in New York. It's thirty thousand dollars. We don't have that kind of money. So what I've learned is how to do it. I've got some tricks of the trade that work and um, and I love it I love working with small business owners and like Karen said we do a lot together there's a great marriage with social media and PR um, and, and I'm excited we do this every week and you know give you guys tips and tricks and ideas and we bring on amazing guests so I don't want to talk too much because I have want to hear everything Jolene has to say <laughs> I know, I know. so we tend to start these every week with a little bit about what's been happening in our individual industry so Christina what's going on in the PR world well, you know, obviously, and I don't want to get into it. There's, you know, a lot of tragedies going on. If, if you're in an industry that's involved in that, certainly, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities to pitch safety stories. Um, the flooding in South Carolina, if you're in, in the insurance industry, you should be on television in your local market talking about what happens if that happens in your area. You know, do you need flood insurance? I, I don't know that South Carolina is very prone to flooding. So it's just, just a good way to get yourself out there um, in front of the media. You know, always look at what's going on. Um, and then this sounds crazy, but it's October. If you want to pitch magazines, you need to be thinking Valentine's Day. So if you have anything creative to pitch for Valentine's Day, now is the time to do that. And uh, we're going to have in a couple of weeks Andrea Ayers on, and that's kind of her expertise is getting into magazines. So she'll talk a lot more about that too. I'm really excited to have her, but um, but that that's kind of it right now for me. So how about you, Karen? Social media. Yeah, What's very cool. cool. Well, you know, in social media, things don't happen as far in advance as they happen in PR. Yeah. Right. <laughs> things happen pretty. In fact, they've probably changed since uh, you know since I've started thinking about what I was going to talk today. But to me, wasn't it one of the things that's most exciting in social media? To me, and this is totally a uh, digital marketing geek moment, but <laughs> I'm absolutely loving the new Facebook lead ads. So I don't know if you guys have ever have heard of that yet, but basically Facebook today has rolled out a new type of Facebook ad. It's called a lead ad, and it allows you when you run it. So like I have a free video series that's an opt-in on my website. So if I want to run an ad to that, I just tell Facebook I want the username, I mean I want the email address and the full name, and Facebook shows it in the stream, and when you say yes, I want to subscribe, it pre-populates your Facebook information in a form right in Facebook, no sales page oh, needed, wow. and you click another button and it takes them to the to the actual opt-in. So there's no in-between, it's so fast. and. I've got, I just started running them today and I'm getting about a dollar a conversion already, which I think is pretty good. Um, and what's cool about it is, so there's a little bit of geeky stuff that you have to do, right? It doesn't automatically filter to your CRM. So I use Entreport. You know, it doesn't say, Entreport doesn't know that this person exists. So I have to download a file from Facebook and upload it to Entreport or MailChimp or whatever you're using, AWeber. So you've got to upload it so that they actually get on your list and get the rest of your um, your your lead funnel, right? But it's a really cool new tool, and I think it's going to change Facebook advertising because you don't need that sales page in between, right? It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. All you do is create the image, and you can really start to um, build whatever it is you want to use Facebook ads to build. So for your webinars, for 
again, just grow your list with an opt-in. It's pretty good stuff. You guys should check it out. It's called Facebook Lead Ads. Um, and it's just available today. Yeah, check it out. Cool you are stuff. at a cutting edge, girl. I know. <laughs> it's so cool. like crazy. I know. I'm like, I keep refreshing my power editor, I mean, my uh, Facebook manager, to see if I've got any new leads yet, you know? And my VA and I have been emailing That's back great. and forth all morning about how we're actually going to get them into Entreport so they can get video two, right? Because it's a three video series. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun awesome. stuff. Fun stuff. So, Jolene, tell us a little bit about yourself. We'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, I can do that. Uh, my name is Jolene Moody. I didn't choose the name, I married into it. <laughs> and I get a lot of flack for it. Um, I'm a former television reporter and anchor who left her job to pursue the world of public speaking and entrepreneurship. And I did that in 2010 and I couldn't be happier. So uh, in my journey, basically what I do is when I'm not a keynote speaker, I am teaching other people how to find and create paid speaking opportunities. So whether that's a paid keynote where they get a chunk check for five grand or seven grand, or I teach them how to find platform speaking or conference rooms where they can show up as themselves, um, share their content in an integrous way, and then convert the room to paying clients. I love that. I love That's that. Because, you know, yeah. <laughs> that certainly I can, and I think I can almost speak for Christina here. I know when I started out, I love speaking. But when I started out, like you just speak anywhere, right? To just get some experience and to practice. And it's really hard to make, for me anyway, it's been a really hard transition for me to, to change it over from speaking at, you know, even, I mean, I've traveled to speak and I've got my expenses paid and I've gotten paid a few times, but it's really not a revenue stream for me. And I'm at the point right now where that needs to be a focus for me. I need to make it a revenue stream and I need all the help I can get. And I think it's a really common, I think it's a really common struggle for people, right? How do you convert it from speaking at the library to getting paid $5,000 to speak? This is, you are speaking my language and this is exactly why I do the speaker pro where we met Karen and then you emailed me and I must've gone blank. Um, <laughs> But once a week, I do a blab to talk about this. I wrote an ebook that was published in June, and it's called, I mean, it doesn't get any simpler, How to Find and Create Paid Speaking Opportunities. Because this space where you are is what I call the space between. And I started a blog, and the blog is called The Space Between. Because it's that space where we don't get paid or we get just a few bucks. And the space that you're moving into is how do I get paid between a grand or nine grand for a talk? And this is my generalization, and this is how I look at it, because my personal goal is to get to 10K and above for just one talk. So your question, just so I'm clear, you want to know, how do I get out of those yeah. rooms? How do I get paid for my talk? Well, first of all, it sounds like the space that you're in is the conference space. You show up as a business owner, right? Yeah, I do. I spell, I, yeah, exactly. I show up as a business owner yeah. on, a, on a topic like why everybody, should be talk, why everybody should be using LinkedIn or how to improve your LinkedIn profile. Those kinds of things. Yeah. So those same talks can be rebuilt, restructured just a little bit, and offered to organizations and to colleges. And for everyone in the room, I'm speaking very general terms, but colleges need people like, like Christina, like Karen, like everyone over here on the right, because for two reasons. They need them in their career development center. So take notes, guys. This is good, juicy stuff. So you want to, like, find a list of colleges, start your... That's good. I take notes too. I love taking my notes. There's just so much valuable information from these blabs. But reach out to the career director. Hi, my name is. This is what I have to offer. Um, I use a two sheet. And if you go to my website and you go to the speaking tab, you'll see I have like three talks. And it's a brand new site, so forgive the skeleton look of it. It still needs some love. It's a WordPress site that launched uh, last week, oh, beginning really? of last week. So when, I, when you click on the links for the talk, right away a PDF will come up that is my, it's a two sheet. It's a one sheet, but it's two pages. It's who I am. Look, here are my three talks that have a brief, but very accurate, and Christina can speak to this, get to the point when you're talking, um, description. There's a link that leads to my Sizzler Reel, which is a three minute video on YouTube. It has everything they could possibly need to see what I'm about, including a link to my website. So I created that because I don't want to be in that space anymore, at least all the time where the conferences are. I want to be paid. So I've got to reach out to, to colleges. I do that. Mm -hmm. 
I also reach out to their student um, activities department because they have events every year. They bring speakers in and they'll pay you between two and six grand. And unfortunately, you got to haggle a little bit. I just posted a blog today saying, don't haggle your services. As speakers, every time you have an organization that wants to pay and is used to paying a keynote, unless you are someone who has struggled with serious adversity and you have a huge story and you've made headlines, a celebrity or a professional in your field and your name is very well known, you've got to keep moving up to be able to get paid for those gigs. And the same holds true for the organizations. And for all of you out there, Go ahead, finish, and then I have a question. Um, it was just one little uh, statement. The organizations, people say, where are they? You're going to go to Dr. EJ. I, I think you posted the link for me last time. It's W-E. Here it is. This is a great... I spelled it wrong. This is a great um, resource where you can find... Is it Weddles or Weedles? Here it is. I'm going to post the link for you right now. When you go to this link, you're going to see a series of um, categories, accounting, finance, agriculture, marketing, aviation. Everybody in the world belongs to an association. So therefore, there's an association for everything, and they need speakers. So if you go to that site right there, and it should pop up in a second, you'll be able to begin navigating a world where, where when you go to these websites, you'll see that they have events or they have conferences, and they're annual and they need speakers, you wanna find the link for speaker submission, and within there, they're gonna ask you what your fee is. And I'm sure that'll be a question. Well, let me ask you, okay, I'm gonna go on that. I'm gonna stop right there and ask that question because- I, Christine's I excited, know, right? Right. All right, go ahead, Christine. You can no, go first. Speaking. But that, that's the, the thing that I don't know. You know, I've been told you never do under $4,500 when you're doing like associations. Then I've heard, you know, cause there are, they have budgets like $5,000 and below. Then I've heard there's a huge demand for women entrepreneurial speakers with a story. Like I have a, I have a pretty good story of how I got to where I am today. Uh, you know, do, what, what do you start with? What's, what's the magic number to start with an association, with a college, with something like that? I start three grand with a college. Sometimes I'm, um, I quote five grand, depending on who I've talked to, because. Here's the thing, everybody has a budget and everybody who has a budget is told to say, I've only got this much. Last year, I was contacted by a, a college here in New York State, kind of in a, a frazzle. They, their keynote couldn't make it, could I come in? And I had charged them two years prior, so my fees have increased, two grand. So here they are calling me two years later and they asked me what the quote is. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I charged you two grand before, how about two grand? They said, we only have 1500. So this is the space where, you know, the negotiation, you have to be really strong and stand into your space because there has been times when I've stood solid and I've lost the gig. So you have to consider who's in the room. So for this particular case, they gave me, they said 1500 is in the budget. So I said, here's the deal. You give me that 1500, you give me a hotel room, you write three letters for me, which I have the template for and I give them, Genius. to send to other Genius. organizations. And then next year, I'm your keynote for that two grand. And they said, yes. Oh my God. So it was all in my contract. So, you know, it's a great question, Christina, but it's, you've got somewhere to start. I say, when you go to colleges, go three grand. If you're over there going, no, that's not enough, great, go four. Organizations, I say go five grand. If you're sitting over here going, Jolene, you should be saying six, then do it. Mm -hmm. No matter what you say, they're always going to tell you one of two things. We have a budget, and they do. Um, it may be more, it may be less. We never know. There is one way to find out, and I'll show you that in a second. And the second is, um, I forgot what I just said. There's two ways. It's what what they, did I just say? They have budgets. Everyone has a budget. Yeah. What was I pointing to though? What was the point so I can make the second one? I said, there's two things you have to be aware of. You were talking about organizations? My mind is going 18 miles, miles an hour. Right, yeah. So you'll remember. So they're gonna, or they're gonna tell you, and, and especially for nonprofits, but this doesn't happen so much in the organization world, they'll tell you, well, we're a nonprofit organization, so we don't have. Right. And so those are the two things you hear all the time. I hope that answers your question. It does. It does. It's certainly, you know, and that's kind of what I've done. I actually, I had one that I stood pretty firm on. It was a university though, but for what they were asking me to do at their budget, I, I actually turned it down. I didn't think it was good for you. It was worth it. Yeah. 
So and I think you have to sometimes. My question is similar to that, and I'm going to kind of make a little bit of a confession. I have a college that reached out to me and asked me to give them a quote to do a LinkedIn talk to their um, social media yeah. um, people that are taking social media classes and talk to them about how you, how to use LinkedIn as opposed to resumes and vice versa. And I haven't given them a quote yet. No. Um, and it's I'm probably overdue. So that's my really five. And that was five thousand dollars. It's a yeah. class. I mean, it's not really a class. How long is it? They are saying. Why are you questioning your worth? Do you need me to come over there and tell us what you? I know. They're saying to me, "What would you know? You tell us what you want." So it would be a lecture hall. Um, it wouldn't be like a small class. It would be a lecture hall, and they would invite everybody that is in a particular, um, I think, track, you know, to come to this thing. So it's it's for one particular um, subset of the college. I don't even know what they're called, but it's not like the entire college. It's one different department. Um, but I feel like if I do it, I can, I'll, that's like my, that's it'll be the first college I've done. So that'll give me some, I like the idea of telling them I want letters because that way maybe I can even go a little lower um, because I really do like this lady and I've blown, I really have almost blown it off to this point. So I can say, I'll do it as I'll do it at a reduced rate of 2000 and I can drive there by the way. So I'll do it at a reduced rate of 2000, but I want this, this, and this as well. You, you're going to do ultimately what you want, Karen, but if, if you were sitting next to me and you were my client, one, I would hug you gently, and I would look at you and say, just ask for five. Okay. If they say, sorry, we have three, then you're going to be kicking yourself in the ass for offering them two. You're right. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? I am going to finish that application. That, that I'm going to finish that thing as soon as we're done with this call because and get it off to her. Good. It's good. So because here, the, the most they can say is no. Right, but here's right. the, I, I, and here's a little story for you. I spoke for the Rotary Club two weeks ago for a very dear friend of mine that I used to be in news with. So it wasn't paid. I did it as a favor. When I left, two things happened, and this blows my mind. I, oh, I got to show it to you. Um, two things happened. One, someone approached her. She's the vice president of the Rotary Club and said, how much did we have to pay to get her in here? Because they thought, oh, my God, you know what I mean? And they thought it was such a big deal that they took a picture of, um, her name is Carrie. They took a picture of Carrie and I at the Rotary sign and it was published in the local there newspaper. You go. And my husband called me because right. you're on the front page. I'm like, oh my God. So, so those people saw worth right. that I didn't expect. And that's what you're experiencing right now. Ask for five grand. Okay. They may not be Done. expecting it. They may not. I mean, I asked for three grand for an event that's about an hour and a half away, and there was about four seconds of a really long silence. And she said, we're reaching out to other speakers. I'm afraid we can't do that. Well, I'm not going to say, okay, bye. That's when I have to put my foot in the door because there were 160 women entrepreneurs in that room that I needed. I didn't even care about the fee because I could have converted that room. So every situation is stylistic and different. So I put my foot in the door and I said, what is your budget? And there was four more seconds of long silence. And she said, two grand. I'm like, well, God's sakes, count me in and give me a hotel room too. And we were good. Right. And right. Jolene, you bring up a really right. good point. And Karen, I mentioned that too. You know, when you first start speaking, you know, like I, I've done the chamber events and I've done this and that. But in my local community, you know, people have gotten to know me and, you know, they're on my list. Well, I got an email this week. You know, I, I got a big client from somebody who saw me speak at something that I did for free a year ago, but they just had a big hit and they needed help. And here I am. Um, so sometimes it's not, you know, and I just signed in. I have a friend who runs a chamber. I really don't do chamber events anymore. And he, I've known him for 30 years. How can I say no? But they're also, you know, 50 of the top business owners in, you know, the suburbs of DC. So it could be a win-win and it, you know, I'm going to see friends and I'm going to have lunch and it's not that far to drive. So it's not, it's not bad. You got to weigh those. No. And it's, and you make a very valid point, Christina, every situation is individual. It depends on, you've got to determine there's lots of variables and you can't get rid of those variables. If your ideal client is in that room and you sell a service-based product and they're not going to pay you, I, I'm going to go. Yes, I'll speak. Of course I'll speak because I know exactly what I need to do and how to do it to get people to fall in love with whatever it is I'm saying, visit my website or buy my products. But the, the, there's only one distinguishing factor in all of this. There are people out there that strictly want to be paid speakers and there's people out there that do both. So in a way, you have to decide which ones you're going to just, I guess, fight for to say, look, I appreciate that offer, 
but this is my livelihood. This is how I make money and my fee is 5,000. Can we talk about something closer to that? So really learning how to bring, you know, and if they say no, I used to get so triggered by this, but now I'm just, I kind of settle into it because you always know they're either going to challenge you with that because they want to pay you less or they surprise you and they go, okay. Now, does right. it affect your brand, let's say, if you're doing keynotes at $5,000 or $10,000 and then somebody asks you to do, you know, a, a side room workshop? Because I actually turned something down for that exact reason. And I don't know if that was smart or not, but I kind of... For what reason? Because well, I feel clear. like I'm, I'm, I'm now branding myself more as a keynote speaker than somebody who's teaching a workshop after the keynote speaker. So I will not do that anymore. Is, it, is that a good decision, bad decision? How does it feel with you? It feels like a good decision. I feel like I, I, I branded myself <laughs> as a keynote speaker. I want to be the one on the main stage that everyone's coming to see, not someone who's teaching you PR tips in the back room. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, I would say if it feels good, then you know you, you did the right thing. It's For me, I'm the same way. I want to be the keynote. I want to be the one in front of the room. I want to be the one that everyone wants to come to and ask questions of afterwards. But I also build my own events. I have a huge event in two and a half weeks in Syracuse called Speak Easy CNY. And I built that specifically. And, you know, I, I have a partner in it. Her name is Joanne Del Belso. I don't know if she's in the room today. I think she's making videos today. But um, we chose to make that event so we could see exactly who our ideal client is. Where, and so there's people who need adjustment in social media. That's what Joanne teaches. And there's people who want to be better speakers and learn how to find gigs. That's where I come in. So we're making money because we have sponsors. We're making money from the ticket sales. And then we're going to make money from um, anybody who's interested in buying from us. So in that venue, I'm cool with it. Workshops, I just taught a workshop and the, the fee was $47. And it was four and a half hours and they got cookies and um, fruit. So you make a very valid point. When you want to be seen as a keynote speaker, you have to decide to stay in that realm and live in that realm and your website sleeps, eats, and breathes that realm. Or you're the multi-passionate entrepreneur and you're speaking and you're teaching and you're doing all of these things. It's just, it's such a variable industry. Yeah, I, did, I did have put myself, if I am teaching, I am teaching for a corporation or an association or a company where I, you know, it's just me in front of all of them. But that's also for a very high fee. Yeah. Yeah. And good for you for commanding it. I don't, I don't know why I keep saying good for you today. It sounds kind of Charlie Brown to me, but good for you for commanding well, But there's value. I, I, I see that. And, and I realize oh, when yeah. I leave a client and they are like, oh my gosh, even marketing people, marketing people who that's all they do. They're like, these are things we never thought of for our business. So sometimes just to have that's a fresh, great. you know, fresh perspective, but, but I don't want to be in the back room after a keynote, you know, teaching for 20 people. So I'm, I'm standing firm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jolene. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And even if you were to do that and they were adamant and asking, then you've got to either increase your keynote fee yeah. or people who want to come into that workshop have to pay a fee. And, you know, we all know, the three of us know, and the majority of us in this room know, when we don't charge, the result is the, the quality of client. Yes. It, bottom line, end of story. I, I charge $225 for a consultation. I don't care if you want to talk to me about shoes. That's what it costs. You know, it, it, I, and I had a, a woman last night try to say, well, let's collaborate and we'll talk about this. And I just would not waver. I'm like, this is what it looks like. She wasn't very happy with that, but that's okay. I want to share something with everybody watching because that sparked something that somebody said to me. If you put yourself out there as a free speaker or a $200 speaker or a $500 speaker, guess who they're going to refer you to? Other free speaking engagements are $200 or $500. But if you command $5,000 and you're fabulous, guess who they're going to refer you to? Other people paying those fees. So that's really important too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for anybody, um, Karen, you had asked earlier the question, how do I get out of the free libraries and into that space? First and foremost, make the decision. Make the decision and decide that's the case. You know, stop deciding you're going to do it for free and then look for those spaces. And again, I put a link in. I don't know if I still have copy and paste. There it is. Oh, and I wanted to tell you about this other resource. We were talking about budgets. Oh, oh my, my God, this thing is mammoth. Now, this wow. is... This is Columbia Books and Information Services. Everyone write that down because you can get this online. 
you can get this information online. But this was cheaper, and it fit my budget when I bought it. Because these books, there's two. There's two this size. I think they cost me about 800 bucks for these books. And what these books do, <laughs> come back. I know, right? It's a good workout for me. I bet you these weigh 40 pounds each. Uh, so these are from 2014. This is the National Trade and Professional Associations. Is that backwards? Nope. It's good. Nope. Or it looks normal to you. And again, it is published by Columbia Books Information Services. Why is this a gold mine? Because, my loves, when you crack this baby open, this goes by, um, by state, by budget index. So when you go to, let's say, we, um, let's say, Christina, you're invited to speak at the, let's pick a, an industry, the Advertisers Industry of America in New York City. They want to talk to you about PR. You can go into this particular index, this volume, find where the association is, and it will tell you when their conferences are, what month they are, whether they're annual or biannual, what their entire budget line is. It doesn't break it down. But there's some of you that's like $2 million. So I'm like, listen, if you can't afford two grand, we got to talk. Right. So it gives you some leverage. It gives you contact information, website names, how many members are a part of this. This was probably the greatest investment I've made, and I haven't done it yet. I'll probably do it again in 2016 because a lot of things will change. But right. when I work one-on-one -on -one with personal clients when I was doing business coaching, whatever state they lived in, I gave them the information from that state so they could start looking. Right. So I just gave you the link to it. Oh, and Dr. EJ just put, thank you, my love, put Columbia Books Guys, on there. my birthday me. is in December. Yes. So if anybody doesn't know <laughs> what to get me, you can start shipping in, and that's what I want. Buy the online version. Don't do what I did, because online you can copy and paste and search. Okay. I got to type everything in and scan, you know, so don't okay. buy the books. I thought I was being smart. Good information. So, Good information. Yeah. So that's where you want to start. Yeah. You know, on the topic of your books, I actually have a little bit of a funny story to tell you. I, I, you know, this past week I was digging around your website a little bit. I wanted to make sure I knew about you before we spoke. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to go on Kindle and get her ebook. And it said, you already have this book. I was like, really? I guess I need to pay more attention. So your book, I must, I don't even know when I bought it, but um, now I'm going to read it. I guess. Oh, I can good. I'm glad. glad. Yeah. I'm but glad. Was funny. I was like, wow. So. Like, well, okay. if, if I can, you're mentioning it. I'll mention again for the 14 in the room. On my website is a $4 ebook titled How to Find and Create Paid Speaking Opportunities. Four bucks. I'm going to show you everything we're talking about, but more detailed oriented. And there's another one I wrote too, How to Write a Talk That Sells. And I thought that was really important information because a lot of people, when they're platform speaking or conference speaking, they, they don't know how to with integrity, present a product or put an offer out there. They feel manipulative. They feel like they're taking advantage, all of these things. So in that particular book, I move you through that mindset so you could break yourself free of it because there's nothing wrong with offering offering a service. Right. And then selling and converting the room, converting the room to paid clients. I right. love talking about this stuff. Can you tell? Yeah. So here's what my brain's going. What do you guys think of this? What I'm thinking is, I got to get this freaking first gig in with that college, which, you know, they're practically handing to me. Mm -hmm. But then what I'm thinking is maybe I'll like pick a month, like in the, say February or March, and I will just try and find colleges in a nice warm place. I mean, first of all, every college needs to be talking more about LinkedIn. Every single college. Yes. There isn't one that I talk to that says, oh, we're already teaching LinkedIn. They're all going, we really need to do that. I'm also doing, um, I'm also talking for another local college for free. My cousin is in the class. And they're looking for a social media speaker. So I'm actually talking to another local college about social media. So I'm thinking I need to just put together a little package and then re out, reach out to colleges like all in one particular area and say, I'm going to be in, you know, Florida in February 2015. And I'd love to, 16, I'd love to speak at your college or something like that. Like maybe I can actually give myself a little tour that way. Yeah, um, I would. If you do that, I would recommend that you reach out with your information eight to ten months beforehand. I was just going right. to ask you that. That okay. was my question. Yeah, yep. that was going to be my next question too. Now I'm going to show you guys. Are all you guys open to seeing what my two sheet looks like that I give to colleges or yeah, organizations? Yeah. That yeah. Be, so that yeah. means you have to go to my website. This is uh, my website. Dot com. I can spell. There it is. So go to my website. And I'll walk you, it's really easy. 
if you go to everyone can see the um menu bar at the top right yeah mm -hmm. go to speaking and again this is it's still work in progress so don't yell at me um scroll down and you see the it says call or email to learn more about her three more, more most popular transformational and comedic talks right if you click on any one of those links are you ladies there yeah yeah if you click on the trifecta of uncertainty my pdf is going to pop up and you can see i designed this it says top three reasons organizations choose jolene i have the exact same document that says top three reasons colleges choose jolene ah, okay and throughout this document i made some verbal adjustments so it matched when i'm speaking to an organization and so on but um, I have my top three reasons. The message sticks, experience counts. This is my PR for myself. You can see I have a link, Jolene in Action. Click here for the video. It's a hyperlink. It will take you to YouTube. Scroll down. Oh, look, a lovely testimonial. Look at this fantastic picture of this chick dancing. I'm showing up with my personality. And then the second page are, again, just a brief description of what my talks are actually about, plus contact information. This is what I send to those colleges. And I did the same thing, Karen, except what I did is I gathered all the names in New York State just to right, like, right. target well, all the colleges. Obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's, it's interesting because I just did a new, I guess it is a two sheet. I called it a one sheet, but you're right. It's a two sheet. I just did one. So now I'm going to edit it and do a set, do the exact, same exact thing and focus it on colleges. That's genius. And it's done already. It so is. It's just take me a half an hour to, to really, and I really like it. I mean, I think it, professional looking. I don't have a video yet. I mean, I have a ton of video. I just don't have an edited three minute video. There's yet. another one. I don't think it's on here. It's not. I have another one that is geared towards, um, and this would speak to you, Christina, because you do, I don't know if you if you um, still want to, but you do trainings and businesses, you said, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll go in and I have a completely different one that looks different for training, for teaching yes. people how to be better public speakers, or again, how to find these opportunities. And that's a completely different one. And I send that to the career development centers at colleges and to these organizations. So I hit them in two ways. Hey, I'm your keynote, you gotta pay me. And hey, I'm your trainer, you gotta pay me. Who do you pitch for, um, for your keynotes at the colleges? So there's a lot of different titles and I'm gonna tell you this process is arduous. And it's another reason why I started the blog because I wanna take people through the process. You can reach out to the director or the coordinator of student activities. Okay. You can reach out to the coordinator of Greek life, sorority life. So those are where keynotes would fit. And your keynotes should have something to do with buzzwords like millennial, like social media, like, you know, uh, different, different things that, that meet the vibe of millennial. Um, the economy is a huge word. Um, generate is a huge buzzword when you're creating your marketing material for these colleges. Um, and then again, the director of career services. And the way that I target them is as a trainer, because I love teaching. Yeah, me too. I, I love doing a four hour workshop. You I know, I want to get paid for it, you know? So um, yeah, start there, Christina. And you'll see as you dive into each college website, that every title's a little different. Sometimes you have to go here to there to there to there to get the information. You're scraping the information if you have a VA or somebody that's willing to do it. But I have a completely separate, I know this looks probably ridiculous, my fingers are cold. I have a completely separate document with a college name, the person I reach out to. The, the first thing I do, by the way, is I send them an email with no attachments and a hyperlink that says, to learn more, click here. When they click here, they get that document that you just looked at. Now I That's just my first heard, touch. I just watched That's a really something, good idea too. And and I heard and I don't know, good, bad, or indifferent, but this was a professional saying that um, people when they read emails are uncomfortable clicking a hyperlink and that if it's your first initial email, you shouldn't say click here and hyperlink it. You should put the whole thing out so they know they're not going to some kind of a hacked site. That's a great point. I never thought of that. I didn't, I just heard yeah. it, I was like, oh, that's kind of smart, maybe, just that way they see it's a legitimate, you know, PR right, it's on your website. backslash. Right, Karen Yankovich. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so when I had actually, a, 
a very high-end speaker recommended that I put the link in, but I think you make a valid point. If it says click here, it might be intimidating as opposed to for the first underlining the whole thing for that initial yeah. email when they don't know you, and you know that right. you, you know you could be they're trying to hack into their system or something like that. That's so I thought that was an interesting point that I'm I would yeah. have to change. It's been pretty effective though. I I think I'll play with it too because I'm using the. Um, I don't think it says click here. I think it says something like click here to see the three talks that I can offer you, but here is underlined. But when I don't, and I generally don't hear anything after that first touch. So two to three weeks later, I email them again. Yeah. And all I'm doing with that email again is saying, hey, I sent this, did you get it? I get more responses from that second email. If I don't hear a response from there, then I pick up the phone and I call. I don't stop until I get some sort of answer or resolution to who I need to talk to. I love this. Okay. You know what, I just started, I just have a VA that's focused on helping me with this. I cannot wait, first of all, just to send her the link to this. Um, but I'm actually thinking I'm gonna maybe give her, like picking that maybe next week, give her another five hours and say, let's put all this together. Let's blast it all, have all the processes in place, you know, like, like just put it, you know, like, bla you know, kind of blitz it a little bit, to have everything in place first. Um, yeah, it's this, a, it's a process. It's I yeah, mean, I yeah. hit every week. I spend a few hours on this. And this is why, by the way, less than 3% of the people that are in this room or anywhere else will actually go through what it takes to get these highly paid keynote talks. You have to do the grunt work. You have to keep. I had one organizer in Tennessee. I wanted to go to Tennessee so bad. So you're talking about like reaching out to areas that you wanted to go to. Right, right. And she right. wasn't responding to me, and she wasn't responding to me. And I know that organizers get busy, and it was an email, and then another email, and then a call, and then an email, probably over a three month period. And I knew time was running out for me to get into this gig. So I called one last time, and every time I called, I always remained humble, calm, and I didn't take they're not responding personally. And she said to me, she sent it in an email back to me, and I saved it, but basically said, at that time I was doing um, business coaching and my title was client closing expert. And she said, I love your, pers your persistence and your perseverance. I can see now why they call you a client closing expert. So for people out there that are afraid they're being pesky, in my humble opinion, when you show up with drive and determination, that's not what they see. They see that drive and determination and that's what they want on their stages. And right. Jolene, that's why you're successful. And that's not just in speaking, that's in everything. I mean, you, you have to do the work. So people think, you know, oh, overnight success, I'm just gonna do a launch online and make six figures, and I'm gonna go send one email and get $10,000 speaking. No, guys, we have to work at this. But then the payoffs are tremendous. Once you start, yeah. it, you know, it all pays off. Yeah, it, I know. I, I just said to somebody today, like, because we're talking about this whole Facebook ad thing, and I said, yeah, but, you know, one of the reasons it's so successful for me is because I invest in building my Facebook page first, so when I target these ads to the Facebook page, those ads are more, are better converting because it's a warm audience, but that takes patience. Mm -hmm. It takes patience to build, you know what I mean, to get things to the point where they're converting for you. It doesn't happen in the first 20 minutes to try to do that, so this is good. This is good. That's really good advice, Jolene, because I think that I'm with you. I mean, you're never, you're not going to get the business if you don't keep following. That's for sure. Right. You know, so why not be persistent? I just got the um, breast cancer awareness dinner the city over from me, and I have been wanting that talk for three years. I just want to deliver that talk, and they're comedic talks, and I love you know putting comedic flair in my talks. Three years, I've been knocking on their door, smiling, and they called me. And a lot of people, they say, wow, you stuck around that long? Well, yeah. Well, I'm not calling them every day, you know, but I'm showing up and they remember me. So even when, and this is a great tip for all of you, even when you reach out to something, you want to track this in some sort of app. Trello works well. Um, spreadsheets, this, I'm very antiquated. I need it in Word. People make fun of me, but I have to see everything in this box and it has to be color-coded. But I can go back and maybe I've touched base with someone for two years and I haven't heard from them. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, they call me because I maybe I send them a postcard. Postcards are next. Hey, you know, here I am. Don't forget me. They put that in a file. They remember because when it comes down to it, they're like, oh, my God, we need a keynote. <gasps> How about that chick, that Joe, Joe, Jolene right. chick? There you go. Right. You win. But I love the postcard thing because you're right. It's it's kind of approaching them from multiple places. When somebody sends me something in the mail, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I totally do. So I try to do that. I, I, 
I try to do that. I buy stationery specifically to write notes to people on yeah. business purposes so that it, so that I stand out and I'll stick my business card in it just because I, why not, you know, and um, I love that. You know who yeah. Fabian Fredrickson is, right? As I look for, oh, here it is. She sends, I'm like on her email list. This, she sent this for her client attraction program. Yeah. It's a really flimsy piece of paper and it's two colors. That's all you need. Yes. And what right. I recommend is put your mug up in the corner. I haven't made them yet. So this will be stuff I'll be blogging about. Again, it's the space between. It's my journey. But this is something they see, too. They see it right there. They see everything. And they remember you. And they think, my gosh, she's the real deal. Yeah. Right. And it's right. That, that staying front of mind. You know, that's everything I teach for, for PR and publicity. You might not get something the first time or the second time, even the third time. But if something comes up, and you can be an expert. The same thing. Oh, Christina can talk about that. Well, let me find that email. I, I, she's, you know, been in front of me so much. So you're just staying front of mind. So when when an opportunity arises, there you are. And, that, and that's so how the ball rolls. I'm sorry, Karen. Go ahead. No, I'm just gonna. I'm just saying. I'm gonna open up the seat in case yeah. anybody else wants to ask you questions because Christina and I are hogging you a little bit. I know. But continue. <laughs> know uh, this has been so much fun, though. This has been a lot of fun, ladies. Oh, good. Good, good, good. So I, does I agree. anyone have questions for me? Because my most favorite. Because yeah, well, nobody's not. Nobody's nobody keep going. <laughs> yeah, nobody's jumping on. Right, we have plenty. So. Uh, good stuff. All of the Did, lose Jolene? Stuff. Did she lock up? Did I? Am I uh -oh, bad? Am I bad? Oh, uh, you're, you're, we can hear you, but your picture's right, frozen. Oh, now you're back. Oh, now you're gone. Oh. Refreshing. She's refreshing. Yeah, you know what I want to ask her about next? I want to ask her about the video. You know, this, um, is a real, this is a real? Yeah, this is a real. And you've seen mine. I'm finalizing, finalizing it. Finalizing. It should be done tomorrow. Oh, good. So, Jolene, what we were just saying is we want to, I want to ask you about a sizzle reel. It's like, so that three-minute video you have, how did you, did you do it? Do you, do you, how do you recommend that you accomplish that, getting that done? Because that's been on my to-do list for about a year. So I'll tell you how, how you can get it done, and then I'll tell you how I got it done. And Jen okay. math this real quick. Charging for chamber events, they probably won't pay you. That's just pay. traditionally they won't. So um, you'd have to be very, very high end to be able to get paid for a chamber event. So the um, sizzle reel, what I recommend you do is this is my laptop right here. And it's got this camera, which is why you can see me. And what I have had past clients do, and this is all you need to do if you don't have a camera, is call on three, five, seven friends. If Dr. EJ is in here, we were just talking about this. Um, go to reach out to someone at a university, find a professional looking space, put those people in the space, set your laptop slash camera slash phone up. So the shot includes you and those heads, set them up. So that looks like you see the three or the five heads and just talk. Don't worry about mistakes. Don't worry about any of that. Somebody in your network can edit video. When I started, I was a television reporter and video journalist which means they combine the two roles now. Reporters shoot their own video. Nice. So I had knowledge how to shoot, I had the equipment, and I know how to edit. So I had a really yummy advantage to me. And the first talk I ever got paid for, there I was in the back of the room, I had this little camera, it was about the size of a Blackberry. And I was setting up that little camera and I shot myself. So every single person, EJ, Dr. EJ, Every single person that's in here right now, if you're, if you're using an excuse as to why you don't have a video, you have a phone, people use it, don't think it's crappy quality, get it out there. You have a laptop so, where you can shoot it. And Is it three minutes of one talk or do you edit different talks together? And So a sizzle reel is just that. It's your hot, fun, great points. And when you first start, I get that you're not going to be in a lot of rooms to get those taped. That's why you want to reach out to friends. So spend three or five minutes saying some powerful stuff. Maybe you go to a different room and you gather different people. Maybe you go to a Toastmasters. Change, change your shirt, two, change but, your earrings. Change your hair, you know. But give it. don't do th more than three minutes if you can help it. It's like, um, Christina, I don't know if you ever were a reporter or worked with any, but it's just like a, a reel when you're trying to get a job. Your best stand-ups, your best stories have to show up there. So the best you, um, you with the audience laughing, all of those things. So a sizzle reel is just that, the sizzlest, bestest, greatest parts of you about three minutes long. Okay. Yeah. Hey, ladies. Dr. I, e. I welcome. Just, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed your lab. It's been amazing. Great content. I absolutely adore Jolene, as you probably already know. 
And uh, absolutely right. I just want to chime in about the video. Here's a great concept we just used with a client I coach on branding strategies. And one of our clients didn't have the budget to shoot a big production for his sizzle reel. So what we did is got some college film students. Oh, excellent. Who absolutely need thing to shoot. They shoot it for free. They'll edit it for you as well. And it's a win-win. It's like your local colleges, you're Great talking too. about speaking at colleges, utilize those film school students to help get your reel, help create content for your website in the way of videos. And most of the time it's just, hey, if you feed them some pizza, you're in good shape. It's, I'll tell you uh, a funny story about that. When I first started PR for anyone, I needed, I wanted to get some videos for credibility for myself. So I threw this ask out to the universe and I asked to interview former Oprah producer, Rachel Ray's producer, just people that I had touched at some point. And I sent out these emails, everybody said yes. So my entrepreneurial friend said, you can't go to New York with your intern and your cell phone and you know have an interview with Peter Shankman. Like there's no way. So that's oh, yes, exactly, I can. Well, no, I did exactly that. I found these students from um, FIT and it, the funniest story is when we did the Rachel Ray interview, I had the senior producer, he's looking at their cameras and he goes, oh my God, this is nicer than what we're using on the show. <laughs> right. They've got the best right. equipment and they're up on yeah. all the trends. Like they are yeah. awesome to use. And, and nice. what's really great about nice. it That's is, like tip. you said, they have access to the best equipment. Yeah. Number two in the editing process, editing. if you yeah. get an edit student who knows timing, a scissor rule is important to have really great timing and pacing. And if you could just communicate that with an editor, you'll be in good shape. And with little or no budget, they need the experience. You need the content. So it's a win-win. And it's another way to market yourself to the college. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Great. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, I just popped in to say that. Thank you so much. I'll Thank move you. so someone else can come in. Have a great day. Thanks for jumping in. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. Love that. Well, so social media is saying, so she's saying as a chamber board director, not paying for speakers is the way, but it's such a great way to get your skills sorted and build your local street cred. I love speaking at my local chamber still. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I actually just got more involved with a regional chamber in New Jersey and we're talking. And of course, I, I, I decided to help them with their social media because I figured that's a great way to get my skills known by the people in the in this chamber. Right. But we're talking about doing a social media event like in June and this talk is making me reach out to all of them and making sure they all know that I am a keynote speaker at that event. So uh, I have to, you know, we just started talking about the event, so I better make sure I, yeah. I make that really clear to them. If they want me to run this event with them, I am the keynote speaker. Hey, Carl. Hey, hello. You. I just that? popped in to say hello. I mean, it's Blab, so practice talking. And I hear you guys speak, and I hear Dr. EJ, and I was like, man, such command of the English language and confident and comfortable and all that good stuff. But uh, I got a lot of groundwork to do. Jolene, like you said, the grunt work has to be done and it's just prioritizing. I've got school and Olympic training. So when I finish, then it's full steam ahead. But I think if yeah, I, Carlton, talk, you I just glazed over Olympic I, training like that. Yeah, I saw something out. pop up. Did that say, <laughs> did that say potential future Olympic gold medalist? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I said. He just glazed over there. I, I got a bit training and so what, stuff to do. What are you training for? <laughs> uh, 800 meter track and field. Awesome. So That's I make my you, you, uh, You've got something to speak about right there. I mean, that there aren't mm -hmm. that many people, you know, who train for the Olympics. And that's got to be, I can't even imagine the years and years, probably, you know, since you were, what, high school, younger? No, I was... Uh, I just found a little bit of a glimpse of su success in high school. And that was over 25 years ago. Uh, what happened was I saw a picture of uh, Jessica Simpson, Jennifer, Jessica Simpson, and our maiden name is Simpson. And I decided, or I made the statement, maybe I should go to the Olympics. And the store manager where I was doing a book signing said, I don't see why you wouldn't. You have a sponsor. We're here to support you. I did a few more runs and, I was great at the physical therapy. And so it's been since 2012. Wow. But I've been in motion most of my life trying to be an athlete because they'd say, look, we will play one man short 
instead of picking you on our team. I mean, that's how little athleticism I had. Wow. Wow. But bloom late in but life. You and have so, a story to tell, Carlton. I mean, that whole thing. I would watch you. Well, thank you. Know, Christina, I hear her. I see her wheel turning. Not only does she want to watch you, she wants to represent you. <laughs> she knows me. I, I'm the idea girl. <laughs> Well, I, I think the platform is wonderful because Karen, uh, just through Karen, I've made some great connections. Uh, and I was congratulating Jolene on Dr. Le uh, Leonora Rhodes. I was also interviewed by her. So it's th this platform allows people to connect and then expand their connections. And it's not cheesy. Right. This is my favorite. My This is social media for me right now. This and Twitter. I abandoned Twitter for a long time, Carlton, and now I'm like all about it. Facebook is just like, oh, hey. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like me speaking about Olympic training. Facebook, yeah. This was 13 <laughs> other things. Uh, it's about 14. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I love this. And, you know, it's I, funny because people ask me a lot, what do you do on Twitter? Like, I have a lot of Twitter followers, and I work really hard for that. So I'm talking about using Facebook ads, right, to grow this program I have. But I get just as many opt-ins mm. free from Twitter as I get paid from Facebook because I've spent so much time developing Twitter. So... It's a really powerful platform, and I love that you guys are using it because people give it a bad rap. Like, what's this tweet stuff? You know. Well, I found that. I like number it. One source of traffic to my website. Number one source of traffic to every website. I everybody that I work with, their websites. If you do it properly. There's an analytics uh, infographic on all these things you can do on Twitter. I just found it yesterday, and so it's like, oh, I can analyze my Twitter page. No charge. I mean, you just get behind the scenes and look at it, and then you can do uh, cards. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm expanding my knowledge on that. And I'll There's tons of Twitter analytics free to everybody. Yeah. People don't even know that page is there. But if you dig around in your profile, you'll find it. That should be a whole – we can do a whole show on that, Karen. <laughs> Twitter, right? Twitter. I think we're, we're booked through December already, so yeah. or through halfway through December. So uh, oh, that's great. Okay, well – No, it is great. Is great. I just wanted to say hello, so I'm going to pop out so Thanks. someone else can. Bye, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Nice it's good to see, to see you. All. Good to see you. All right, you guys, we've got we're good. We have about eight minutes left. We are determined. We're pretty firm at keeping this yeah. to an hour. Um, so, um, just if anybody else wants to jump on for a couple of minutes, we'd love your questions. Um, you know, and in the meantime, I'll give a little Karen and Christina commercial. If you guys <laughs> haven't seen it yet. Um, we really should change the name of this program to, to get seen to be heard, Christina. But uh, Christina yeah. and I run a workshop called Sword of Profit. Um, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it's two on 20 or whatever. But it's the two of us live with you guys, right? Um, and it's I think the next one is in November. So we basically work with you to help develop these things we're talking about here. So um, if you want our individual personalized help, it's a full day. It's virtual. So you don't have to come to New Jersey or Virginia. Um, so check that out if you have any interest in that. Um, maybe by November we'll have all of our speaking back ends done so we can uh, talk to that as well a little bit. Jolene, I want to ask you one quick question since no one's hopping on and I, I want to t take advantage of you here. So I had heard that if you if you do on your sizzle reel, if you're recorded, you know, not on a stage, if you're recorded, you know, like on, on the ground, basically, those are the things you'll get booked for. And if, you know, like I happen to have, there just happened to be a, a white notepad, you know, one of those big pads behind me. And it was one of the best talks I ever did. You said, you know, talk about people laughing and jokes and it was perfect, but I've got this big white thing behind me. Does that matter? Is that kind of put a red mark next to what type of speaker I, I could get booked to be? I don't think so. I don't understand what you mean by notepad. I mean, it didn't look like a big, brilliant stage. Right. It looked like, you know, I was just kind of teaching or writing on a whiteboard kind of thing. Oh, I see. That's what you were talking about. Um, that's a really good question. I, It's never hindered me, but I'm not writing on a board. Like, if you look at my sizzle reel. Oh, I'm never writing. On I guess it. it just happened to be there. Happen to be there? No, I don't think so. Tony Robbins has one there all the time. Oh, oh. that's exactly what he uses all the time. <laughs> oh, so I like that then. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, the, here's what I'll say about it. If you think that you're not big, you won't be. And everyone's got some place to start. And I know I've gotten gigs, but before I even had a website, it was because I showed up with such confidence and people could see what I could do. And really, the people that can see what you can do in that vein, those are the people you want hiring you and creating a relationship with. 
So I think, yeah, that's fine. It's good. I, I do agree with that. And that's when I speak, that is my number one topic that I start with is mindset. That you've mm. got to have the mindset that you are the best at what you do. Because if you don't have it, how in the world can you convince anybody else that you're going to do the best job possible for them? So okay. true. And that's the basis of everything we talk about here, yeah. really, is believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then no one else is going to yeah. And give you, you know, in the way you want to be, um, you want to be supported. So we've got a question here, and this is a good question. Um, she, talks, she talks about the fact that she's been speaking in the Facebook marketing niche, but she wants to move into speaking about building her business on Facebook while she's coming out of an abusive marriage with no business and, you know, and debt and homeschooling her kids. You know, I'm going to let Jolene answer that, but I would say, I don't know why you have to do one or the other. You want to transition. I think you can start. I think it's a story and a story is a great place to start a, a talk from. Right. And I think you can kind of do both and just start looking for audiences that would be interested in that story and go from there. I mean, what do you guys think? Um, building my business on Facebook, coming out of an abusive marriage. I talk about when I, whether I'm teaching or it's a personal keynote, my um, personal struggles with addiction. And sometimes it just comes out, you know? So I, Here's my take, social media, MNDR. What is your name, my love? Here's my personal take. Whether you're teaching or delivering a keynote, and keynotes tend to have that more inspirational touch tone to it, all of mine do. Right. So if you decide to build a talk on um, speaking about building a business, that is such a great story. Like Christina was talking about, such a great story to say, look where I was. I felt hopeless. But here's what I discovered, and here's how I did it, and you can too. So I hope that answers the question. And, that, and I'll throw a little bit more in on that too. That's when I speak, people love my story. You know, I, I was on a completely different path. I got out of college. My father was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I had a job in Germany. You know, this is before the internet, before cell phones. So I had to leave everything I'd ever planned for and start all over again. And it, that's the story. And, and to be successful 20 some years later um, because of that and the journey. So uh, the story is what people want to hear about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be vulnerable. That's what I said to her. Be vulnerable. Be authentic. Right. Be authentic. I, you know, I don't have, I have a similar, I mean, not the same issues, but a similar story that I, you know, I was a single mom raising four kids. And, yeah. you know, and I, and I basically use that as, you know, you just got to start with the confidence in yourself, right? It isn't about, it isn't, you know, the struggle, there's a lot of struggles out there, right? And you have a struggle and I had a struggle and, you know, we all have struggles. Despite that though, you were able to build that business. And I think that that's a powerful message for people to hear. Um, yeah. I think it really is. Cause I think a lot of people get caught up in the, you know, but what do I know kind of thing. And yeah. everybody has message. a gift that they can share with the world. And I say this, yeah. you know, for, for publicity too, there are a million financial planners out there, let's say, but, but you have something unique that you do that you can offer people. So everybody just, and it was speaking too, you know, what is that gift that you can share with the world that makes you unique and different? Yep. Hey, Mac, Mac good. Burnett the third, welcome. Yeah, and, and Chris, yes. So Sherry Lee, I think that, you maybe start incorporating that, but I think you can write a talk around building your business, right? And you can talk about how Facebook was a big part of you building your business. So you mm -hmm. can start to merge those talks a little bit first. And, you know, I think it's good stuff. I really do. I think it's good stuff. Cool. All right. Do you have any more questions or is it time to wrap no, up? No, I think, I think we're near the end. Jolene, I just, I'll let Karen close, but I need to gush a little. You are amazing. I am so happy oh, yeah. to meet you and know you, and I hope we can work together sometime in the future and just love. Yes. This is my favorite show. This is so good. Oh, well, thank you very much. I it appreciate it. Thank you. And, and you know what? I, I literally saw Jolene on a blab about two or three weeks ago, and yeah. I said, I want to have her on. And I sent her an email and we don't even know each other. You know, I sent her an email and then she's like, wait, what did I agree to? <laughs> and she's like, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. But I don't even know what this is. And I, that's how I just kind of quickly just said, oh, no, we have to have her. Like, I knew as soon as I heard her that that are the people watching this. And, you know, listen, there's the 16 people watching this now. But, you know, I've got a social media audience of, you know, 80 or 90,000 people. So does Christina. So we... Oh, yeah. You know, we are, this is the foundation of this, but this message gets out to a lot of people. And I 
Jolene, I really appreciate you being yeah. here um, and doing this, you know, kind of just blindly. We don't even have our processes in place. My VA is still writing the letters of, you know, welcoming yeah. people to be our guests. You know, we don't even, you didn't even get a letter. You just got a, here's the link. Yeah. I'm in the same place with mine, but I, I am very grateful for it, Karen. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I put your website in the chat box. Everybody go check her out. I know you, you, you want to mention your books again and your course just so everybody knows what you have. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking to figure out how to be a paid speaker, I have two ebooks. They're four bucks a pop. One is how to find and create paid speaking opportunities. It's very straight and to the point. There's no BS about it. The other is how to write a talk that sells. Again, straight to the point, no BS about it. If you want more than that, there is a study course where it's five modules, guys. It's the audios and the um, worksheets that show you exactly, I even put in what you need to say when you call someone to help you if you've never done it. Because I believe in diplomacy and I believe in asking the right questions and I believe in courage. So I'm giving you all of those pieces in that and it's 97 bucks and I have yet to have someone tell me that it didn't serve them. And that's just me being honest, I'm proud of that. Because when I built it, I didn't want to put it out there. I thought it would suck, don't we all think that? <laughs> and then I put it out there and it's like, oh my God. So. So I would love to visit, uh, have visitors, and I would love, love, love if you would follow me on Twitter and Blab, too. We have a party every Tuesday. It's called Speaker Pro Blab. And I'm going to have to reach out to you guys. Yeah, yeah that was great. Because you have so value. Good. I definitely can see some fun collaboration here. So we yeah. might have to keep our brains going because this, yeah. yeah. this has been fun. Yeah. We have the same message, really. And and that's that's really the most important part. I don't, you know. It's really about how do you, how do you, everybody that's listening to this, how do you just have that confidence in yourself to share it with the world? And when you do, everybody wins, right? Mm -hmm. You win and the people that are listening to you win. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being here. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up. Jolene, thank you again for thank being you. here with us today. I really appreciate it. You guys get seen, be heard. We're here every Thursday at 2.30 Eastern. Um, next week, let me just double check to make sure I have this right. Next week, we have Bill Ballou with us. And Bill Ballou is a guy I met at a conference that I spoke at. Um, he actually was a speaker at the conference. And we really clicked. He's a guy that talks about blogging. blogging. Um, he wants you to blog every single day, which I do not do. But <laughs> we'll I have lots of blogging game since I met him because I do so much work, right, on my blog. And if he can give me a few little tweaks on how I can get my blog seen more, right, that helps me be seen more. So we're excited to have Bill here with us next week. So um, put that on your calendar, you guys. Um, Christina, do you have the link? You want to put the link in so people can join? Oh. Um, hang yeah. on, I can probably find it. Um, you, it's, you talk about it. Ah. Oh, I thought. Let's see, everybody locked up. Did I? Oh, we lost Karen. Oh, <laughs> we lost her. So, all right, everyone's gone. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you next week. Thanks for joining us today on our Blab series, Get Seen, Be Heard. If you've missed any episode, you can always find us at www.getseenbeheardtv.com backslash YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll always be notified when we upload a new episode. We work together with clients, helping them combine social media and PR to get more customers and grow their business. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, visit us at www.soartoprofit.com. We have regular workshops where we combine our expertise and show you how to use social media and publicity to get seen and be heard. See you next week.